This tutorial requires expert to ninja skills for the first time and it takes a lifetime to prepare. There are so many steps you are gonna go mental. Anyways, it takes about two hours to apply and the money we spent went into silk paper, toothpicks, that clear plastic ball and a ball cap. Now let's do this. There is that two-piece plastic ball. This is actually a uh, do-it-yourself Christmas uh, ornament thingy from a craft store. So put it together like that because we need those eyes to be in place before we apply that liquid latex. Of course, go check that ultimate latex paste guide to get your mix correct. Basically, it's liquid latex and baking flour mixed together. When it's perfect, you can just smear it out onto your creation. And please Google up a nice reference of the mermaid from the movie The Shape of Water, because that's what we are basing this out of. And we start to sort of bake in the ice there just to make sure they stick when everything is dry. This is a shaping process that is gonna take a while, so we just need that paste in place before we start. And right there on the phone you see our reference image. So find yourself one and start shaping that mask with any kind of tool you got. You can also use your fingertips and make sure you dip the tool in uh, liquid latex to make it float better on top of that latex paste. It's a two-piece mask, actually three, because we do another session of this later on. But uh, yeah, it's a two-piece mask, so you will be able to move your mouth. Um, it will be a bit restricted, though. But uh, you will get understood, and people can hear what you say. And you can stuff your pie hole full of food if you want to as well. For detailing, such as the nose, you can of course use any kind of tool you got. And here Ellie is using the back of a brush dipped in latex to get those nostrils in place. And while you create those nostrils in the shape of the upper lip there, I'll go get myself another cup of coffee. Because right now it's 7 a.m. in Sweden and I am not really awake yet. So, anyways, finish up with liquid latex on your fingertips to smooth any area that is too bumpy out. And there you go, leave that to dry overnight. Next up, flappy skin pieces for the neck. And we simply pour out liquid latex in a tray put it in a nice flat level space and leave that a dry overnight as well. All right, so next day, the mask is all dry. So we trim the edges a bit there with a pair of scissors. When that is done, we pin the whole mask to a styrofoam head because the next step is actually extending this mask back over the head. So we continue with another batch of liquid latex paste and extend that mask back over the head. No worries, nothing needs to be glued here. That new latex paste will automatically merge with the previous mask piece, so. And again, consult that reference image of yours to get all the shapes right. Do the fine job there with your fingertips or other tools. And yep, when you're done, you guessed it, leave that to dry another night. If you feel you are missing a chin piece, that might be because we are missing a chin piece. So let's create that one as well. 
What we didn't mention in the tutorial overview is that you need a lot of patience for this look. It's a uh, delicate process here, shaping and going in with the fine details. Because you sort of have to let that latex paste sit for a little while until it's not too wet. And then you can uh, go in, do that detailing. And with those final marks carved in there, gently, time again to leave this to dry overnight. And then we bring out that flower to peel it off and of course apply that flower along the latex on the inside as you peel it off or the latex will stick to itself. And that of course goes for all the different pieces. Give it a little trim and put that on your styrofoam head as well. There you go. And you remember that tray of latex? There it is. And as you see, it's much thicker on one side than the other. And that of course is because we did not put it on a super level place to dry. Anyways, again with the flower as you peel it off, this will be very sticky otherwise. Place the whole thing on a flat surface and paint out these nice shapes of that decoration on the neck. I'm calling it a decoration, I know. It's a fishy man, a merman, so we need this sort of overlapping gill-like pieces there. Cut the pieces out, there you go, and apply those as well to that styrofoam head. And we apply them overlapping to get that nice fishy look of it. And of course you don't have to pin them to that styrofoam head, but it was a nice way of getting the full picture and a nice overview of how the whole thing is gonna turn out. And the next stage is also fishy, namely the fins. There we go. For that we're gonna need some silk paper and toothpicks. These are perfectly round toothpicks because we thought that looked best. Anyways, we apply them to that silk paper using liquid latex and to get that organic feel, we make sure they are sort of different lengths there. Let them fan out, nice like that. One round of liquid latex and apply another piece. And make sure you go in there and really push in that paper to hug those toothpicks. And another round of latex on top of that. We need a total of four fins, two different sizes on each side. And if you want to speed up that drying process, just go over it with your blow dryer. And then we simply cut off those edges there of the toothpicks that stick out. Shape our little fin, cut off the excess, and go in and do that detailing there. And the fin starts to emerge. And because of that different length of the toothpicks onto the paper, we get this nice natural look. Project Fin is not over by far, we need huge ones as well. And this is where the whole thing on the styrofoam head comes in handy because we can measure out and get a sense of how large those fins need to be. So we take a piece of paper, use that as a template, cut it out and paint that onto the silk paper. To save some cutting time, we stack four pieces of silk paper on top of each other 
and cut all of them in one go. So again, same process as the small fins, liquid latex, toothpicks, slap on another piece on top, dry it, cut it all out, and to get a full sense of what this is all gonna look like when it's finished, we apply all those fins to the head. And there we have the small fins as well. You can of course cut and trim there to make a nice fit. More silk paper. We need two little ridges going from the eyes back over the head here. Sort of like tiny fins. And we do them very simply by folding silk paper, applying them with liquid latex. And then we make sure they aren't flat down on the head. We need to peel them up a bit. When they are in place, we apply another round of latex on them. Just like that. Make sure they are not flat down on the head. Just peel them up a bit and leave them to dry. Time for that paint job on the eyes and we need to line here on the outside to make sure we know where to put the pupil and where to put the eye back in. Because yep, we are ripping everything off, trimming and actually knock out those eyes so that we can paint them. Alright, get those plastic balls out. And since we are painting these eyes from the inside, we need to mask out a tiny little hole so that we can look out through that later. Sort of like a pupil, right? So we place that. Good thing we did those paint jobs before so we know where we want it. And again, it's a good idea to consult your reference image here. We need a thin black line there around the pupil and we also need to define the area on where to paint. So. There we go. Now we know where that iris is gonna go. And now for that insane detailing work. I know they look like madness right now, but we start off with a little bit of white color, circle around the pupil with tiny white dots. And of course you need to think in reverse because the top layer of what you see on the other side needs to be painted first. And as you might have noticed, Ellie has switched to gold there in between those other white points. Then mixing gold and green behind that whole thing. So we will be seeing gold and white and then a tiny green-ish gold line behind that. And this is detail work that is just crazy. So take your time. We are using a toothpick because it was pretty easy to get those dots in place. Some black and dark green along that line. More green. And then these nice patterns here out in the iris. It's gonna be a mix of green and gold. And the cool thing about this is that when you're done with the eye, you only have one more to do. <laughs> with a full paint job in place, we go in with a black hairspray color and simply spray that whole dome black. When it's all dry up, use a toothpick or tweezers to peel that little tape piece off and your eyes are done. And speaking of eyes, get your eyes on Metamorphosia FX. Go check out Julia's amazing work there. Everything from paint jobs to crazy FX. And speaking of paint jobs, it's time to start that paint job and we flick on brown colors here. This is alcohol activated colors. 
and we flick that on to get a nice organic look on that skin texture. And we are switching back and forth between brown and green tones here, making sure it all dries up a little bit in between. Small brush to emphasize those details and dab with your fingertip on top of that as well to make it look less painted on and more natural. Slight little brown and purple mix there on the lips. Back in with the detailing on those lips. And I want to learn more Swedish, and Swedish is. Jag vill lära mig mer svenska. Then we go in with a slightly darker brown tone there, flicking on that paint again. It's actually green-brown-ish in a nice mix. And then starts a real project. You see, this dude in this movie has a very spotted and spotty skin and patterns. So, well, to make little dots, you need to make little dots. So, <laughs> it's gonna take you a while. And it's not only one color, because when you're done with one, go on with the next, in this case, from dark brown to a slightly brighter one, right there. Tiny bit of that purple tone in it as well. This is sort of the edge where that colorful paint job on top of the head fades into a more natural skin tone. Or well, natural and natural, but a more fishy, skinny look. Heading on to that blue. Same process here, tiny dots to make that pattern. Not to worry, you will have plenty of time to do those dots because we need one coat of our basic blue here and then we need one coat of mixed in darker blue and of course heading back to lighter blue as well later on so it's a lot of a lot of detailing with our blue pattern in place let's fill out with green But as you guessed, a flat green won't cut it. So with that base coat in place, let's dark that down a bit with a dark green. And this is basically why this look takes forever to create. There you go, and you also see we have started with the gold. And that's the next step, of course, going in with that gold. Lining the blue. After that dotted patchy madness, let's go create some fins. Starting with a light brown coat here, like that. And now we switch to green. This is gonna be a whole bunch of different colors here, all doing their part in one nice mix. Darken down those edges there with a dark brown. Let that flow over on those little spikes or bones, I should say, like that. The base a bit darker. 
Now it's starting to look like something. To keep things in line with that spotted texture, we flick on a bit of dark brown there. Then we flip the whole thing over, give it a coat of spray, of black in this case. And of course, we can't be without that gold, because that's sort of this character's little special feature. That nice little gold shine. It's gonna give these fins a superb look. Just check that out. Looking shiny. Now let's do that neck piece. And same thing goes here. Flicking on that paint. Nice light bright beige. Onto blue. And another coat of that light tone just in the middle. And darker tones on the side. And then we head back with the lighter tone in the middle there to give things some nice dimension. Again, we simply dab it on like this. Don't want too much of a paint look on it. Those dots are the whole thing to this look. And speaking about things that make this look, those fins. So we attached them to the side of the head using a glue gun. You can use any kind of glue you got. Next step is to add to the fishiness of our creature, namely make it shiny. And for that we're going to use a clear varnish. Any kind of hobby varnish you can get your hands on. Just dab it on there. Leave it to dry and guess what? Then <laughs> you're good to go with the application. And there we go, a beautiful face and another beautiful face. And yep, let's protect those hairs and the hairline from the nasty latex. Throw on a bald cap. Fantastic. We secure it with a bit of a liquid latex here. You can use your favorite skin adhesive, whatever works best for you and your skin. And of course, we can't have this bright skin tone shining through the mask, so we need to prep our eyes and the area around our mouth. Or we can simply go full cat and be done. Uh, it all depends what you're in the mood for. Apparently some grapes, it seems. Anyways, spray color, hair spray color, I should uh, stress that. Do not spray your nugget with regular spray. Alright, the moment of truth. Putting the mask on with a liquid latex or skin adhesive. There you go. Pull it back, make sure it's tight and snug. And a tip for extra comfort, add some cotton to the back edges of the plastic balls there because they scratch up against the skin and after a while that can be pretty irritating. Using a hairspray color there to fade in the prosthetic and then we go in with a little green and dab that on as well, merging everything together. Next up, applying that lower jaw piece. And with that in place, it's time for some green here. We need to make that edge of the prosthetic disappear. Fade the whole thing into the skin there. So we basically need to extend the paint job of the prosthetic onto our skin. Using the same kind of method with all these patchy patterns dabbed on there. Also use a stipple brush to get it in place a bit faster. There we go, let it extend it down to the neck, look at that, that edge is disappearing. And before putting on those nice fins, we prep the skin with some black hairspray color, nice little base coat, and then we apply those huge side fins. Drying that latex a little bit, making it more sticky. 
before putting it in place. And we recommend you doing this in two steps to not get all sticky. Apply it on top and then go down and apply it onto your skin. And since we're on the subject of applying stuff, we go in and put those neck pieces in place as well. Everything went according to plan, except for one piece that we actually had to cut in two. There you go. To make it fit a lot better. And with that in place, we can switch our attention to the paint job on the chest and body. And as I've said numerous times during this tutorial, this is where your reference image really comes in handy. We simply start by getting the outlines in place and then go mad with a paint job. There is going to be a lot of fading, so this kind of motion here, fading away from the lines, is preferred to mix it in with the common colors, dragging the paint out and away. After the base green, we go in for some highlight. Again, that fading as we go towards the edges. Bringing in those shadows to make the details pop. And for the rest of the skin, we need a base coat of that same tone as we have on the face. But this being cream colors, we are mixing uh, green and yellow here to find the right tone. Blend that in with the rest of it. And for the arms, we go in with the green hairspray color. And with a very light push on that nostril there, we get these speckles there of black, saving some time, but we cannot get away exactly from that same process we have been doing along all of this tutorial. That nice patchy pattern. Stipple on that mix of green and black. And then it's time for the blue details. Going in to give it the same look as we have on top of the head. The mask there with a base blue. And then we go in for additional blending and a tad bit of green there to blend things together nicely. And as you probably guessed, we need that gold dabbed in there as well. In between. Getting those last details in place there. And that of course includes a little bit of dark blue and a little bit of light blue. Give things a great dynamic look.
And then we bring out the glycerol, which we haven't seen in a while here, to give this overall look a nice wet sheen to it. This will keep this wet look for quite a while. And it really looks like our creature has come out of the water. Make sure you get that on those fins as well and then you are ready. Look at this amazing merman inspired by the Shape of Water movie. We are really proud of this look and we hope you love it as much as we do. It's quite the project to uh, create it but it's so worth it when you got that finished look in place. We know you had to wait extra long for this but there will be a shorter wait for the next look. And that one is uh, based on a walking dead creature. I think you know which one it is if you follow us on Instagram. Subscribe and like this video if you like it. See you soon.